Hello everyone and welcome to Deep, Deeply Rooted. <laughs> I'm your host Robin Norgren and I am so happy to be here with you today. Um, it is episode number 192. So very soon I will be hitting episode number 200 which seems so incredible to me. Um, it is one of those things where um, you know you think about the work you want to do in the world, how your life is affecting others. And, um, you know, if so, if you're so inclined, the Christian view of shining your light in the world. And, um, I think for me more than anything, um, you know, coming from humble means and working class people and, um, military background and, I don't know, just all the things that just make a life very ordinary. <clears throat> you start something like this and you think, can I really um, maybe offer something that maybe would encourage someone else? So I just want to thank you for all, all of you that are have been here a while and welcome those that are here today um, because the goal of this podcast is to um, take this spiritual desire to be the change in the world and move through it in our everyday human experiences. And I am so glad that you're here. Here's an excerpt from an upcoming book that I will be publishing in June. This page is entitled Step Forward, and it shows a young woman, not so young woman, (laughs) standing in a doorway, waiting. Justine Musk says, every journey starts with a separation, a leave taking, a realization that the place you are right now is a place where you can no longer stay. The choice to part ways with a bad idea, a wrong decision, a friendship, or a relationship. Many people ascribe to the cliche when someone makes her bed, she needs to lie in it. And in some cases, the decision to do that might bring deep wisdom and have far-reaching value. But is there any decision that you are facing right now where you know you need to make peace with it and let go? Today's invitation to imaginative prayer is entitled, God as Potter. The room is simple. A concrete floor, some clay, and a potter's wheel. There's a large window. A ray of sun shines across the floor. A potter sits at the wheel. She sets a lump of clay on the wheel and the wheel begins to spin. The potter's hands dance with the clay, interacting lovingly with it. She sings over the clay while delicately and expertly creating her art. The song is specific to this piece of clay. Her words speak of beauty and life joy and hope, purpose 
and infinite value. This is no ordinary pot she's creating. This is a masterpiece. As the clay begins to take shape, she laughs with delight. Her face glows with joy. When she's finished, she holds her creation high as if in triumph. Then the potter brings her creation very close to her face. She touches it to her cheek. Perfect, she whispers. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Isaiah 64, 8. How does it feel to know that you're a created masterpiece and the potter plans you in great detail? Do you feel like a masterpiece? Why or why not? Listen as you, you're held up to the potter's cheek and proclaimed perfect. Talk to God your potter, and tell God how you feel about how you've been made. Diary of a Creative Entrepreneur, entry February 7th. For the past two days, I have been meticulously linking all of the new products onto the appropriate websites, sewing kits, art kits, art journal kits, creating beautiful cover art for the products and YouTube videos and making sure the YouTube videos are appropriately tagged. Sold my first two art journal kits this Sunday morning, purchased the paper mache class, and also sold a full curriculum. Sent all the documents to the lender to see if we qualify for pre-approval. Sent all the documents as we have our, get ready to have our taxes prepared finish watching Navarro cheer and then got an email on Sunday 7 18 p.m. from the director of my school February 8th completed my three videos for this week for YouTube woke up and wrote my mission statement this morning came across the artist Ashley Bryan from the book Beautiful Blackbird, which I want to recreate in our classroom because he wrote this beautiful book and he also wrote a book about puppets. 
I have conceded the classroom experience to my coworker this week, and yesterday went much better. Though she only wants to do one task at a time, so everything else in the classroom still ends up falling on me. It is what it is. My mission is to leave work with enough energy in place to continue to create a sustainable business model. I pick a few of the Creative Craft Club projects and propose to do one a week at, at the school I'm at, and then to have one or two art projects a week that are just available for them to do as free, um, freestyle. Hoping that this stabilizes the environment. February 9th. Found out that the school is finally getting the space next door that they've always wanted. And it will be a third primary classroom. And all in all, things are going better in the ODE space as the assistant teacher is allowed to be the one teaching small group. Found out that we are pre-approved, which can potentially go up if we can pay off two credit cards, or at least the one that has the higher monthly payment. And as soon as I've worked at the school for six months, we will need to have the closing costs, which is in savings right now. So the tax refund will pay off the two credit cards. February 10th, another day of being observed in the classroom and realizing it doesn't matter which role I'm in. The assistant teacher does not work, does not want to work as a team. Yesterday, she actually asked if she could go ahead and do the art project that I prepared for the day. And guess what? I almost let her do it. <laughs> I quickly came to my senses and realized this is the one thing you like about your job. <laughs> Do this thing. It's sad that I'm in a situation where friendship is not desired, but okay. Now I know. Two days straight coming home wondering, what can I do to make this better? And the reality is we just have two different philosophies. One thinks to just have one thing to do is enough for 20 to 24 students with differing interests and differing age groups and maturity. Everything I suggest is always met with a no first. A good pep talk and a well-timed text from a friend really helped find me find my footing again. Well, thanks so much for coming to be a part of this community of deeply rooted people. And I just want to thank you so much for those um, who do help continue um, this work that I'm doing in the world. So how can you support me? You could sponsor me on uh, this podcast uh, each month and you decide how much you'd like to sponsor each month. You could sponsor me over on Patreon. You could um, subscribe and share my YouTube channel so that I can reach the goal of 1,000 subscribers so I can start to get ads on my channel, which helps support what I do. Uh, you can also buy my art journal kits, my art kits, my sewing kits, all of those found on Etsy. And then, of course, there is my original art and uh, prints um, that you can check out and purchase as well. I am so very grateful for any way that you choose to support what I do in the world. And I truly hope that it allows your light to shine a little brighter in the world that you live in. Thanks for stopping by.